Hey everybody and welcome back. This is season three, episode one of the Still in Love podcast. We are very excited to be back. We have missed you guys. And here's what I believe, Myra, that this will be the best season yet. We have so much in store for you guys. And today we are talking about live with the Thomases. <laughs> I'm so excited about this season mm -hmm. i'm so excited about this episode me too, me too. i'm so excited to be back with y'all y'all we miss y'all mm -hmm. and we're excited to be back there's a lot in store uh for you all mm -hmm. and listen not only are we back with you all but we are live on instagram facebook and tiktok so we're gonna have some fun today mm -hmm. we're gonna have some fun together mm -hmm. so we're gonna let y'all know a little bit about what's been going on with the thomases we about to answer some questions for you. So this is the first podcast, y'all. This is number one. What's been going on with the Thomases? So a mm -hmm. couple of things we want to do. This season, season three, mm -hmm. is going to be dynamic. Mm -hmm. It's going to be dynamic. Season three is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. We're going to have special guests. Uh, we're going to communicate. We're going to have. We got a lot in store for you. So mm -hmm. make sure that you stay tuned in. A lot of new material, a lot of new content in store for you. So tune in. Illustrations, things uh, that's really going to help you. Um, have a a, a, a a thriving marriage mm -hmm. but what we want to do also is we want to hear from you we want to we want to take the pulse from you mm -hmm. and get ideas and suggestions from you as it relates to topics what would, would you like us to speak about mm -hmm. we don't we want to scratch you where you're itching because okay. sometimes the information can be really good mm -hmm. but you may feel like yeah that's good but i need this we have people that that um send us emails and, and, and dms that asking hey look can you do videos based on this can you talk mm -hmm. about this i want to hear you know from your standpoint what do you feel about this or, or what the scripture say about this and so we want to give you all the time now to just put in the comments and let us know what are some of the things that you would like to to uh be discussed yeah. during this series that's one you're gonna put that in the comments and also we're gonna take some time to answer some questions that you may have right now we got a few already but okay. we, want, we want to take a, a couple of minutes to hear from you and we'll answer the question right on the spot, unscripted. Okay. Let's go. We untamed. We, we unleashed. Hey, we unleashed. Do, do, do we offer uh, virtual counseling? We do. Yes. We do. Yes, we do offer virtual counseling. Mm -hmm. Go to Steel, S-T-I-L-L, -L, mm -hmm. the letter N, mm -hmm. love, L-O-V-E dot com. For more and info. For more info, you can get mm -hmm. connected. But yes, mm -hmm. we offer virtual counseling counseling we just started offering that a couple of weeks ago so you're right you're right on time mm -hmm. uh, people been asking now for a couple of years yeah. and so you're right on time yeah yeah all of our sessions are virtual uh yes. talk about blended families now or during the the season mm -hmm. I, I think they're meaning during the season yes so so that's one that we'll note blended families mm -hmm. blended families we, we've done that before but we'll, yeah. we'll go into more detail about blended families because i think a lot of people uh, absolutely uh, in, in blended families in mm -hmm. We need help. Yeah. You and know. if you haven't gone back, you can check out. There's a couple of, well, there's one episode I know for sure in season two um, to go back and make reference to that. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's even difficult when, when you have a family that's not blended, mm -hmm. how you have to be on the, the, the same page on mm -hmm. one accord mm -hmm. when you, when, you know, in any family, mm -hmm. but blended, you have to, you have to double down and lock down and make sure you don't want a cord in a blended family. But yes, we'll, we'll dive into that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. You want to speak to that? I mean, I, I can make mention of a couple <laughs> of on. things. Well, one of them is, you know, I think sometimes just as women, we get really caught up into our our role of nurturer. And um, we don't often think that we wear multiple hats or that we have multiple responsibilities and sometimes it's hard to juggle between me giving my kids what they need me now I have to show I'm showing up like this maybe at work I'm showing up like this for my kids and we may sometimes neglect um our spouse um who also needs something from us but I have also found that it is extremely hard to give when you don't have it to give and one of the ways that we ensure that we're always full of having something to give is to make sure that you're placing yourself as a priority Absolutely. as well. Um, and, and that that's in short is um, 
prioritizing your priorities. It is ensuring that God is first because that's how your cup will be filled. Um, and then you're able sometimes to give to others, but then also sometimes in prayer, when you're communing with the Lord, he will show you, or he will lead you to certain things like, Hey, you're, you're not filling your cup in this, or he'll show you another way um, to get what you need so that you can give to those around you. Um, but in terms of putting the children first, I, I, I can, I can, I can definitely see how, um, as a mom, you can get caught up in that cycle of just caring for your children because children demand a lot. Children demand a lot. And depending on their age, the demands are, um, different. I would say that as they get older, they have less needs, but that's not the case. They just have different needs and you have to mother them and nurture them different in different seasons. And, and you have to be light. I use this terminology all the time. Just personally, you have to be light on your feet. And that just means that when we get to another season, I have to pivot and sometimes do things a little different. Um, I certainly cannot nurture or love on my 11 year old son like I did when he was a year old or when he was five every age sometimes or or every uh age little grouping I've had to shift and do things different and when you add multiple children to that you do you have to you have to maneuver different so I hope that encourages you a little bit and we will definitely talk more about that in this upcoming season I think it's so important. You, you you have to, you know, you mentioned it. It's the priority. The priority is so important, you know, mm -hmm. and making sure that God is number one and your spouse is, is too. Mm -hmm. You know, Tori and I, we talk about this, uh, and we'll talk about this, Lord said the same in, in uh upcoming episodes. Mm -hmm. But but it's it's us. Mm -hmm. It's us. We 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 tell look, look, we tell look, if I we'll jump our kids. It's us versus them. It's us What's versus up? them. We don't What's we up? don't look What's up? look, we want y'all to know that, that it's us. So if y'all ever get wrong, we would jump y'all. Okay. You know, you know, in in all honesty, the importance of mm -hmm. us being together. And it doesn't mean that that we love our kids in it no, any less. No. It means that we love them, but but it's us first. Mm -hmm. Um it's the placement. It's an organization where you have a CEO, you have a COO, you have directors, you have uh, uh, managers, you have uh, workers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just it's just everyone is valued, mm -hmm. but everyone has a different role. Mm -hmm. You know, on a team, you have a quarterback, you have a running back, a receiver. Everyone is valued, but you have people that's in different roles. Mm -hmm. And your spouse should be the lead role under the Lord. Yeah. Period. Your, your, your kids, your spouse, your spouse should take, that's why the Bible says this, a man should leave his mother and his mother and father and be united to his wife and the two should become one flesh. Yep. You don't become one with anybody, but God in Come your, on. in your spouse. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't become one with your children, mm -hmm. with your mama, with your daddy, <laughs> with your family. It's with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a hard truth. That's a hard yep. reality to accept, but, but it's, it's important to accept it. You know, I mean, it's, it's important to, to implement that. So I hope that I hope that helps. And let me let me quickly mention this because sometimes in parenting and particularly being a mom, it is easier to love your children. Yep, yep. It is easier because oftentimes that love is 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 um, quickly reciprocated. It is not necessarily the case sometimes in marriage you love on your kids you give them hugs oftentimes they're squeezing you back they don't give there's a lot there's not a lot of conflict in the the parent relationship with their child so I think sometimes it's easier to fall into placing your kids a higher priority because they are simply sometimes easier to love because they come from you. So when you look at them, you look at them so much with endearment, with so much love, with so much awe, you think everything that they do is cute. It's not the same as your spouse. So, um, I, yeah, it's, that's just not the same. He grown, they grown, your wife is grown. So her attitude or her sometimes that's not cute. You know, it's not, it's cute when my son does certain things. It's just, it's not cute because we're adults. So. And that's something you, you have to work to make that happen because yeah. when you don't, 
your spouse will feel some kind of way. You just have to work. Yep. You have to work. You have mm-hmm. to work to make that happen. Yep. Um, you know, and remind yourself about who is priority. Mm-hmm. So I hope that helps. Uh, any other question? How do you handle mm-hmm. forgiveness and repentance in marriage? Um, repentance happened in a moment. I think it's um, if you have wronged your spouse, I think it's important that you first repent to the Lord and and also apologize to your spouse and repent, apologize and, and, and show that you're not that person anymore. Repent is a change of heart. Is you making a 180? You saying I'm going mm-hmm. in a totally different direction than I once was going in, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's difficult for your spouse to to forgive you, mm-hmm. and it's okay. God has forgiven you, yeah. and it's important that you forgive yourself, yeah. and then it's important for you to 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 walk in the way in which you're 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 supposed to walk. Mm-hmm. So I think those things are important, and give your spouse the time, the space. To heal. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, if if you was out there violating for three months, Mm -hmm. then get them three months to heal, you know, and sometimes even longer because there's really no timetable on the healing process. And so they may be upset and they may be frustrated and they may lash out sometime and they may have thoughts and and, and about, oh, I can't believe, did you do this? Did you touch her like this? Did you kiss her like this? Did you kiss him like this? Did did y'all go here? And so it's just more difficult Mm -hmm. and give them time and space to heal. And if they have Mm -hmm. questions, uh, give them the opportunity to ask as many questions um, as they can, and don't put a timetable on. And say, all right, now I ain't finna keep letting you, you know, just keep, you know, just, 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 just ask me all these questions. I ain't finna keep letting you, you know. Sometimes it's, it, it takes that, mm-hmm. and and you make sure that you're in a position that you're in a place to where, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I wronged you, and I understand that that you're still frustrated, and I just want to show you I'm not this person, mm-hmm. and I realize that you frustrated, and you don't trust me, and I'm okay with that, mm-hmm. but. Nothing, not not many things can can. Not many things can. Can um, when you're consistent, mm-hmm. when you're consistently being the person that you need to be, mm-hmm. you can't beat that. And your spouse need to see that I'm consistently the guy. Mm-hmm. I'm consistently him. Who is him? Him. I'm consistently the guy that. I need to be for God. Mm-hmm. I'm consistent that guy that I need to be for you. I'm mm-hmm. consistent with him. And nothing, n- nothing, I mean, you, you can't, <sighs> consistency will wear your tail out. Mm. When you're consistent, it's going to wear <laughs> him out or wear her out because you're consistently doing the right thing. And um, Lord say the same, their, their, their heart would, would, would become to a place of, of forgiveness. So sometimes it takes time, you know, it's important that you stay in a place of repentance before the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, uh, being apologetic, you know, with your spouse and, uh, and uh, just, just, uh, just, just trusting for forgiveness. And if you're the one that need to forgive, you know, um, really let it go. The Bible says, you know, you they ask how many times should we forgive our brother? Should we forgive him seven times? And she mm. said, no, 70 times seven. That's a lot. He said, you know, just, times. you keep forgiving. And and sometimes when you forgive, it doesn't mean that trust is established right then. Correct. So I forgive you, but right now I don't trust you. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when, when you forgive people, you think I forgive you. Now I'm just going to just let the trust come back right away. No, mm-hmm. no. You have to rebuild that trust. Yep. And so um, if you're the person that is forgiving someone, forgive them, but allow them to to prove that they're trustworthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're the one that's on the other end that mm-hmm. have done any type of violation, you know, hey, listen, yes. Put your location on. Don't turn your location. Let me let me speak to that. If you all have locations on your phone mm. and your spouse have your location, don't turn your <laughs> location off. Well. Cause sometimes it don't even be about you cheating. It'd be about I don't want you to know where I am. I'm upset with you. I'm mad at you. And I'm just going to be low down and cut the, the notification off just so you don't know. Don't do that. Yep. And especially if you've been the one that's that's ever violated. Yeah. You know, don't keep it Listen on or just take trust. them off completely. Yeah. But um, but keep it on. Keep your passwords off or make sure your spouse know your passwords. Those things are very important mm-hmm. in a marriage. That's how you re- rebuild trust. Mm-hmm. That was good. How can you show consistency during separation? I think um, consistency is is doing that thing that you know that you need to do, period, like Mm -hmm. consistently. I'm I'm doing it in a consistent way. So whether your spouse is around or whether your spouse is not around, I'm I'm consistent. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. So I'm not going to change and revert 
because my spouse is not around. Right. Because right. I'm consistently showing love to God. I'm consistently being obedient. Mm -hmm. I'm consistently being in position. Mm -hmm. So my circumstances doesn't dictate whether I'm consistent or not. Right. Correct. Because sometimes when, when your circumstances are not where they need to Correct. be, then you become inconsistent and just you go back to your old ways. Yeah. But see, when God is involved, mm -hmm. God want to know, OK, when I come back, when I when we revisit this thing, mm -hmm. are you still going to be in position? Mm -hmm. Are you still going to be in order? Are you still going to be in place? Mm -hmm. And so um, my encouragement that even in separation, be consistent with the father, reading your word, staying in prayer. If you're sending text messages to your wife, if you're if you're sending encouraged words, depending on where you all are, you just make sure that you're consistently where you need to be. So if he decide to come back or if she decide to come back, then you're not trying to get yourself together and become consistent. Then you're already that person. That's right. So uh, stay consistent. Don't allow the situation to dictate your consistency mm -hmm. um, or inconsistency. I think that's a, that, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. How do you handle in-laws that don't respect boundaries in marriage? Fight them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's important that you all set ground rules on the front end. Yes. Okay. Maybe that you all hadn't set any ground rules. If you hadn't set any ground rules, reestablish. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and so let's. Let's let's press reset and let's set ground rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how we deal with in laws. So one of the things that we did, what well, we said when we got married, that it's again, it's us against the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's it's us. Mm -hmm. It's we're gonna love our our, our family. We're gonna Correct. give to our family. We're gonna Correct. support our family. Whatever they need, we're gonna. Correct. If our family over, so for one, we had conversations with our family. Mm -hmm. Like they knew, hey, listen, mm -hmm. you don't overstep these boundaries. Mm -hmm. I specifically had a conversation with my mom, like mama, because my mama is my baby. Mm -hmm. She is my girl. Mm -hmm. But I specifically had a conversation with like mama now I'm married. So the two become one mm -hmm. flesh. And so now she's my, she's my queen. Mm -hmm. Don't take away my love for you. I love you. Nobody mm -hmm. could ever take that away, mm -hmm. but this is my number one now. Mm -hmm. And so these are the boundaries where at first you could do this, you could do this, you could do that. But now like you can't, you can't just come in the house and do whatever you want to do mm -hmm. because I have a wife that is the queen of this house. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and the same thing with, with, with her parent. Mm -hmm. And so we, we made a decision to, if my mom ever got wrong or ever violated or ever did mm -hmm. something that you were uncomfortable with, it was my responsibility to address it. Mm -hmm. If her mom ever did anything that violated me or violated us, it was her responsibility to address it. Mm -hmm. And we had to address it. Mm -hmm. To where she had to address her mom, I had to address my mom in a loving manner, mm -hmm. but in a way to where they knew that, hey, listen, we're we're serious about this, and I think it's important, you know, that um, that your spouse addresses their family, mm -hmm. and that you address you all's family, mm -hmm. you know, and and you don't and addressing doesn't mean fighting, right. addressing doesn't right, mean right. I gotta I got I'm finna go I'm finna show her so I'm finna tell her who she thinks she is. Right. Addressing is lovingly addressing. You know, mm -hmm. if I disrespected her mom, that would make her feel I could have been well in my right to do so, mm -hmm. but that would have made her feel away. Like, wait a minute, even though my mom was wrong, that's still my mom. So mm -hmm. why are you talking to my mom like this? Correct. So when I felt that her mom maybe uh, got like just a look out of line she immediately saw that and jumped on it mm -hmm. you know when and vice versa when i saw that my mom got a little uh, mama that a little mm -hmm. out, of, out of line out of place i immediately jumped on that you know and so that's important you have to address it you can't leave mm -hmm. it unaddressed because it make your spouse feel some kind of way when when you're not addressing um when you're not addressing your in-laws or you're not you're not addressing your parents or you're not addressing your family so create those boundaries but it can't be you creating it and your spouse not creating or your spouse Correct. creating it and you're not creating it. you guys get together and talk and communicate mm -hmm. you know what what that looks like and um and and be a unified front yeah be a unified a unified front mm -hmm. and make people respect that and boundaries don't mean that there is a lack of respect. It just simply means that we are establishing and boundaries protects both of us. It protects those that's on the outside of the boundary and those that's on the inside. Right. And so sometimes when you are in a culture where there have not been boundaries, it seems you may get pushback because there was something that is now existing 
that did not did not exist before. Right. So what is this? You you're doing something new in our relationship, and it's like, and that's okay. If you stay consistent at it and still maintain respect, then the the boundary is established. I don't think now, even though we're twenty years in. I don't think that there is even a question it, with every, anybody in our family. Like there's not a question as to who's a priority. And it's not like you're letting anybody else get away with anything either. No, things can be addressed and we don't have to fall out and fight because they were addressed. Yeah. yeah. Responsibilities, especially when the child or parent has a disability. Now, when you start talking about disabilities and other factors that play into pulling of your time, your resources, that is, a, and it absolutely can be a challenge. And I think one of the hardest, most underrated positions in the world is caregiver. Nobody, you know, we really, hopefully, maybe that's something we'll include um, in this season, the difficulties that caregivers have, um, because more is required of you. So for the individual um I get it. I understand. Um, and it can be, it can be absolutely challenging, but one of the best things you can do is talk to your spouse about how you're feeling. And I, my assumption is that it is probably very overwhelming. And if that's the case, communicate, talk, see if there is, uh, other ways where you can receive support um, because what's making it difficult is the fact that you are a one, you are one person and you're limited on what you can give to anyone. So when more is being required of you, that means less that there is less that I have to give to someone else. So leaning into your support and oftentimes sometimes the support can be right within your household. Um, but if you aren't, talking and and maybe sometimes assumptions are made that you should be doing more. I shouldn't have to ask for certain things. Um, and if that's the case, give them the opportunity to say that. Um, and maybe you two can come together on where that support could possibly come from. And then if your spouse says, well, no, I, I, I don't have anything else to give because maybe you're both spread thin, two jobs or whatever, um, then it may be time to have a conversation around looking for outside support because that can be really hard. Okay. This is amazing. So, y'all, that's what's been going on. This is what's been going on with the Thomases. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, been loving on this girl. Mm -hmm. She's been loving me back. Okay. She's my teenage <laughs> love affair. Uh, 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 uh. Amen. Yeah. My teenage love affair. For those that just uh, jumped mm -hmm. on, we want you to know that we are uh, in full force as it relates to our Still in Love marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. We do virtual counseling. Mm -hmm. We do couples counseling. Um, mm -hmm. um, premarital. Premarital uh, group counseling. It's we getting also, ready to come. Yep. No, no. Premarital cool. group counseling is all, already that's here. the premarital, uh, right, and then we right, have right, right. A marriage group counseling mm -hmm. that's getting ready to come, and so, um, so make sure you go to steal the letter in love dot com mm -hmm. and get all the information that you need as it relates to group counseling and couples counseling. We also have a marriage retreat that's coming up in Miami, Florida. So Ooh, we're whoop. taking our talents to Miami, Miami, to South Beach. Yes, and um, <laughs> it's October the eighth through huh. the eleventh. And um, we're excited. We just did a stage play last month. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that was last month? I cannot. Yeah, that was last month. I cannot. Uh, the second That's at the crazy. Orpheum Theater. And it was so amazing uh, about marriage and relationships. And the next one, make sure you all come. The next play that we do, we'll let you all know soon when mm -hmm. it's going to be. Make sure you come out and support. It is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So we'll let you know what it's going to be and uh, when it's going to be. And uh, make sure you come out and support us. So it. the merch that we have on, I have on a shirt that says him. Mm -hmm. And she has on a shirt that says what? God bless me with him. So men, listen, you have to be him. You have to be him for real. So who is him? Him is that man that provides. Him is that man that protects. Him is that man that is a leader and that is a priest of his home. That's what him is. When you provide, when you protect, when you're a priest of your home, you have a right to say him. There's a lot of people that say, I'm him. No, you him, but you ain't acting like him. You, act, you ain't acting like him. But when you him and you're protecting, you're providing, and you're giving guidance and leadership to your home, then you can sit up and say, I'm him. 
and your beautiful wife can rock her shirt that says, God bless me with him. So that's what we're <laughs> rocking today. And you can find this merch on stillinlove.com. Get it, but don't get it unless you him. All right. Those are some of the things that's been been going on with the Thomases and uh we just we just excited. People yep. have been traveling from all over to um just just be a part of what what, what God is doing. So excited about that. Mm -hmm. We excited. looking forward to this podcast. A lot of information, a lot of content, mm -hmm. um a lot of different different faces that, mm -hmm. that that we'll have on the podcast mm -hmm. this season and uh we can't wait to interact and mm -hmm. and and let you in to, to, to what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. In it, do we have a last question? Okay, that's it. Well, God bless. Thank y'all for tuning in. Yay. You know it's in the middle of the day mm -hmm. on your lunch break. Mm -hmm. You may not have been able to catch all of it, but, hey, glad that you was able to tune in to catch what you did yep. catch. Sounds good. Well, that's all that we have for the day. Listen, I pray that God has given you what you needed for today. And so we're signing off. So thank you all for tuning in on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And remember, don't just start in love. But stay in love. God bless. Peace out, y'all. Thank you for listening to the Still in Love podcast. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode and it has indeed blessed your life. If it has, we need you to do three things for us. One, we want you to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform so that way you can be notified when a new episode drops. Number two, we want you to review it. Click on that five star and let us know how much you enjoyed it. We absolutely love feedback here at the Still in Love podcast. And this helps us to make sure that we are scratching where there's an itch. And number three, we want you to share it with a friend or family member. Also, if you have a question, we'd love to hear it and even talk about it right here on the podcast. You can submit those questions at stillinlovepodcast.com. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Innovation Church Memphis and on TikTok at We Are Innovation. Until next time, peace. Don't just start in love, but stay in love. Thanks for tuning in to Still in Love Podcast. God bless.